Hi and welcome to the video. Today we're going to have a look at all of the different tokenization methods, or a few of them at least, in Hugging Face Transformers. Now I'm sure a few of you are asking, tokenization is pretty straightforward and I believe this as well, so why are there so many tokenization methods? So on the screen right now you can see we have these five different methods. Now in reality, each of these actually does do something different, but all of them are simply to produce token IDs. Now, for those of you that are new to tokenization and maybe transformers, we'll just quickly have a look at the very basics of a tokenizer or the very basics for understanding what each of these methods actually does. So, Tokenization, in short, is this. The process of going from what we have up here, which is our original human readable text, so hello world, we also have this exclamation mark at the end there, converting that original text into what we call tokens. Now, tokens can be, well, they can be a few different things. In this case, what we see is tokens built from words. So each token represents a word or um, a part of the syntax to the exclamation mark at the end. Now, depending on what sort of tokenizer you're using, you can build tokens from completely different things. So you, you can build tokenizers from the bytes within the text. You can do word piece encoding. So uh, in this case, there's no good examples, but say maybe we had the word something. Okay, we can easily split this into, I think, probably three different word pieces. So we have some, and then we have ing at the end. That's a, it's a common part of a word. So that would be a word piece in itself. And then we'd also have thing in the middle there. So we can tokenize. It doesn't have to be a single word for each token. It can be a whole host of different things. And then we go from those tokens to the token IDs, which we see at the bottom. So in this case, hello is being translated to 7592, the, the integer. And then we have word and also the estimation mark as well. So that's the, the process. That's what we're doing. Uh, but how do we do that with a hugging face transformer? So we, we have these two files that our tokenizer is built from. So these two here, that's our tokenizer. And when we build a tokenizer, you, if you've followed some of my previous videos on building a tokenizer, you will recognize both of these files. And these are the two steps. So the first, the emerges.txt takes us from that original text here to our tokens down here. So that's step one. And then step two is where we go from those tokens that we previously built in, in step one. We process them through vocab.json and that produces our transformer readable token IDs, which we see at the bottom there. Now, there are a few different tensors that we need for feeding into our model. So with, with transformers, so we've just seen how we build the input IDs or the token IDs. So that's the essential, we need that for every transform model. So token IDs. We also have the attention mask. I'll just write mask for now. And these are the typical ones that we, we would see. So the attention mask is typically a tensor containing ones and zeros. Uh, the ones will correlate to the real tokens within our token IDs tensor. And the zeros correlate to padding tokens in the token IDs tensor. So we have the attention mask, and then we also have the token type IDs, or the you can call them segment IDs as well. And segment IDs are used so are, are used when we have multiple segments to our inputs. So we might have token IDs, and maybe we are doing question answering. So question answering, we would have. Uh, if, if we're feeding it into BERT, we would have 
our question. I, I believe it's in this order. So we would have the question. And then in the middle, we'd have this separate token. I'll just write S E P. And then we would have the context that we're getting the answer to our question from. Now, in segment IDs, anything that belongs to our question would be represented by a zero. Anything that belongs to our context would be represented by a one. So they're the three key tenses that we would be using. And here's just a, a, a visualization of, of the attention mask. So we have the real tokens represented by ones in the attention mask tensor. And then the padding tokens are represented by the zero in the attention mask tensor. Now, I think, I mean, that's all we really need to ask. Quick summary of, of tokenizers in Transformers. Now, how does that correlate to what we're doing here? Well, let's create a new cell. And let, let's take this as our first example. So we have our text, hello world, and let's have a look at what happens when we use tokenizer, tokenizer alone. Okay, if we do this, we see that we create our tokens. So straight away, we, we know that this method here, our first method, it does our tokenization in the steps that we outlined before. So it doesn't do everything all at once, it does them step by step, and you, you can, probably guess that the next step from uh, creating those tokens is to convert them into token IDs, which we, we, we do there. Now it's completely valid method, it's, it works, it's good, but you'll see that it's pretty simple. Like what we have here, we can't create, uh, we can't create PyTorch tensors or TensorFlow tensors there's no arguments for adding padding or truncation, which we almost always need. And we also can't add special tokens. So, I mean, it works, it's fine, but it's, it's very simple. So maybe it's not the best thing if you uh, want to do all of that stuff automatically. Maybe you want to do it manually. In that case, you can go ahead, you can add your special tokens, your padding, your truncation manually without a problem. And then also convert those into PyTorch tensors. So we can do that, that's fine. The maybe easier method is if we go ahead and use encode. So if we have a look at encode here, you can see that we have these two extra tokens. So we have the same as what we've got up here, the 7592 uh, up to 999. So that is our text tokenized or converted into token IDs. And then we also have this 101, 102. Now, if you don't know what those are, it's, it's fine. They are basically uh, special tokens that BERT uses to indicate the start sequence for the 101 or the end of a sequence for 102. And there's also another special token that we'll see in a minute, which is zero, which is the padding, padding token that BERT uses. Now, if we were to use this method for actually building um, a, a tensor for, for PyTorch uh, for BERT, we would probably write something like this. So we'd set the max length equal to 512. We'd set padding equal to the max length. And then we would make sure that we return PyTorch tensors like so right and then we see we get this big pytorch tensor with all these zeros in there are padding tokens right and that goes up to a length of 512 which is the correct size for uh, bert base so that makes sense i think let me uh let me just restrict how much of that we're seeing maybe a little bit let's go to 10. okay so that's encode. Now up here, we also have encode plus. So let's try and see what this is. So we'll see up here, we, we just got our input IDs. So we refer back 
to here, we have our token IDs or input IDs, but we don't have the mask or the segment IDs, which we also need. And that's a limitation of the encode method, which gets fixed using the encode plus method. So if we run that, we see that instead of getting a single list, we return dictionary that contains the input IDs or token IDs, the token type IDs or segment IDs, and the attention mask. So that's straight away, it looks a lot better. Now we can also use all the same arguments that we use in encode. So let's change to encode plus. And we'll remove that for now. I'll add it back in a minute. You can see it now, okay, we have input IDs and we'll go down and we might have to go down a little bit. Um, and then we have token type IDs we have our token types here. Now, this is just zeros because you don't have two sequences in there. Uh, but if we were to pass two sequences, we would get the zeros and ones. And then we also see we have the attention mask. So that's three methods. We have the convert tokens and the tokenize or tokenize and convert tokens to IDs. Then we have encode, encode plus. Now, you may have guessed already from the name, but we also have this batch encode plus. Now batch encode plus allows us to do the same as what we do with encode plus, but for batches of sentences. So if we had, let's go down here. Let me, let me just remove that. All right, so let's take, let, let me take this for now. Right, so let's create a text list. And in here, we're going to have text and I'm going to add another item as well. So hello world uh, again, okay? Now in here, if I were to write encode plus and text list, we see that we get this pretty weird output that doesn't I mean, it just doesn't look right. That's because it isn't right. We we don't we can't pass a list to the encode plus. It will, won't work. We have to pass each string one at a time. And actually, what we can see here is we have these one hundred tokens. A one hundred is the unknown token, and that's because we're passing two objects in a list, string objects in a list, and but the tokenizer is reading those string objects as a whole and saying, I have no idea what this is. So it's just give, giving it a unknown token. So we can't use encode plus. Instead, we use batch encode plus like that. And now we see that we get, uh, we don't only get one of our tensors, but we also, we get two of our tensors. So we get a array for each one of these. So if we, um, let me, Let's write this. Okay. If we go token IDs, we can access each one of those tenses because it's in a dictionary. So you write input IDs. And let's have a look at the shape. Oh, sorry. So I need to, let me just return tenses. So I'm, we can only use the, the shape method when we have tensor. Also, we need to do that. So let me let me uh, take that. So the reason we were getting that error is because our two arrays are of different lengths and we can't create a tensor where we have differently sized rows, if that makes sense. So you'll see in a moment. If I, I'll change the max length to 10, so it's not huge. So we can see here that we've added, in our first row, we've added five, yep, five padding tokens. And in the second, we've added four to make them both the equal size. So we can actually create a, a tensor from them. So let's now go for shape. And we see that now we have, we have our two strings that have both been tokenized and converted into uh, a list 
or a tensor row of 10 values. So that's a batch in code plus. We can add a huge number of strings into that. We just need to add them as a, as a list. And that leads us on to our final method, which is this tokenizer. So you see here we've been using we've been using tokenizer and then followed by a method within that class or that object. This time we're just using the the class, we're calling that class directly. So we can write tokenizer and let's put text. Okay, and I mean if we look at this, it looks like it's doing the same as, as encode plus. So if we compare it to encode plus, exactly the same output. Now, what if we convert this into text to list? Okay, so now we're getting the same output as we got from batch encode plus. So what tokenizer doing or calling tokenizer directly is doing, it's looking at the data type of the input that we're feeding into it is, is the data type a string as is the case with text or is the data type a list as is the case with text list it looks at either of those and it says okay if it's a string i'm going to call the method enco plus if it's a list i'm going to call i'm going to call the method batch enco plus so that's all that tokenizer is doing. So generally, tokenizer is usually the, the way to go. If you're not sure whether you've got batches or strings coming through, it can be very useful to use tokenizer. But that's that's pretty much all I wanted to, to cover for this video. With, with tokenizer as well, it's worth noting we can use the same parameters so if we if we take these we can we can use all of these as we did with encode and encode plus like so so there are the tokenization methods or the the main ones in transformers now i'd imagine there's probably more that i'm not aware of and if you're aware of those let me know in the comments below that'd be pretty interesting to see more of those but they're probably the main the five main ones and i've seen a few questions on those before so i thought it'd be worth covering those and i was also curious myself as to what the actual or the specific differences are between each one of those so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one